welcome to Episode 6 of Ship of the Week. This week, we're covering the United States Navy guided missile cruiser CGN-9 USS Long Beach. Long Beach was somewhat of a one-off in the history of the U.S. Navy, but she bears the distinction as the first nuclear-powered surface warship in the world. Laid down at the Bethlehem Steel Company shipyard at Quincy, Massachusetts in December of 1957, the hull that became Long Beach was originally designed as a much smaller ship, intended to enter service as a frigate, but was considerably enlarged as her intended armament and power plant evolved. This photograph, taken within a month of the start of construction, shows her keel and framing beginning to take shape. And this image, about a week before she was launched in July of 1959, shows off the graceful lines of the last World War II cruiser hull type. It was during construction that some of the electrical cables aboard the cruiser were reportedly sabotaged, an incident that was not the first of its kind at U.S. naval shipyards during this period. And depicted here, Long Beach sits in a fitting-out dry dock in January of 1961. Her sleek lines altered considerably by the towering superstructure designed to accommodate experimental radar arrays to guide her missiles to their targets. She commissioned, in September of that year, $70 million over budget. Powered by a pair of Westinghouse nuclear reactors and two General Electric turbines, Long Beach could maintain a top speed of 30 knots for what was effectively an unlimited range. And as built, she carried one aft Talos surface-to-air missile launcher seen here under officer inspection in July of 1961, two Terrier missile launchers mounted forward, two 12 and 3 quarter inch torpedo launchers, an advanced anti-submarine defense system, and two 5-inch guns. Her armament changed somewhat over her long career as technology improved and new weapon systems came online, but her core purpose as a guided missile platform remained constant. This photo shows Long Beach firing one of her Terrier missiles. She was also fitted with a helipad aft, but did not have any hangar facilities. Long Beach's early career was spent with the Atlantic Fleet, of which she was flagship between 1962 and her first nuclear refueling in 1966. Shifting operations between the Mediterranean and Caribbean throughout the 1960s, she joined the 6th Fleet, alongside the nuclear carrier USS Enterprise and nuclear destroyer USS Bainbridge, departing on a world cruise in 1964, the first all-nuclear squadron reenacting Theodore Roosevelt's Great White Fleet just over 60 years before. The ships, stopping in Africa, Oceania, Asia, and the Americas, and greeting heads of state and admiralty receptions wherever they went, sailed more than 30,000 miles in under two months without once stopping to refuel. The latter part of the decade and early 1970s, Long Beach saw combat in Vietnam, with her SAMs destroying multiple Soviet-built MiG fighters. She was given a combat action ribbon for her accomplishments in 1972, and after the war, she returned to escort duty based at San Diego, with occasional NATO exercises thrown in the mix. Meanwhile, she rescued more than 100 Vietnamese refugees attempting to flee their ravaged country by boat in 1980, and later participated in support operations off Kuwait and following the conclusion of the Gulf War. There were plans in the early 90s to fit her with the Aegis weapons system, but the effort was deemed too costly, and with the Ticonderoga and Arleigh Burke-class ships coming down the pipe, she was decommissioned in 1994, and the depicted refit, as shown here, never took place. Her upper works and reactors are removed, and her hull appears to remain in storage in Puget Sound. <laughs> 